Hey everyone, check this out. This is pretty special. This is a map of an ancient city long buried beneath the Amazon rainforest. There's a huge complex of some kind here, big streets that run down the city, connecting these smaller platforms, even the field boundaries of long dead farmers. This is just one of many sites that have been discovered in the Amazon and it's kind of taken the archaeological world by storm. This is something I've been keeping my eye on for a while now, and after the last paper, I can't resist it any longer. I just have to talk about these discoveries. So today, we're going to discuss three papers, three pieces of research on these forgotten Amazonian cities. It's incredible stuff. You're going to like this one. It's pretty cool. Whoa, that's weird. Where'd my beard go? Quickly, I'd like to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have nice animations of drones flying around. It's also why I'm walking in the woods, because that's good for your mental health. But sometimes going for a walk in the woods isn't enough. Sometimes you might feel like you need to speak to someone. Better help can help. They make therapy easier and more accessible. BetterHelp can match you to one of 30,000 therapists on their network. To get started, you fill out a questionnaire identifying your needs and your goals. Very easy, very quick. If for whatever reason, that therapist or their time or their session just doesn't get on with you, you can switch for no extra cost at the push of a button, really. I imagine for me, that would be the biggest selling point because finding a therapist, I'm sure, is quite a personal experience, you know, there's no guarantee you're gonna match with the first person, is there? So if you're thinking about therapy, give BetterHelp a try. You can go to betterhelp.com forward slash Stefan Milo or go to the link down below. If you do that, you get 10% off your first month. But let's get back to these ancient Amazonian cities because they're just fascinating to me. They're so big. To kick this video off, we have to go back to the year 1541. Spain was busy expanding its empire across Central and South America, and a friar named Gaspar de Carvajal was sailing with an expedition down the Amazon River. This would be the first time Europeans had traveled the entire length of the Amazon River. Not an insignificant achievement, However, it was basically kind of by accident. The expedition set off from what is now Peru, then the Incan Empire, in search of the land of cinnamon. And at some point, they realized they couldn't sail back up the river. The current was too strong. Obviously, at the time, they didn't realize they had just embarked on a voyage down the biggest river on the entire planet, um, but they couldn't turn around. They had no choice but to continue down the Amazon River, making it to the coast, I think, a year later. I think it took them about a year. Bit of a mistake there, but the accounts of Carvajal and others give us a really fascinating insight into life in the Amazon at that time in the 16th century. On the Monday after Whit Sunday, in the morning, we pass inside of and close to a village very large and flourishing, and it had many sections. And in each section, there was a landing place down on the river, and on each landing place, there was a very great horde of Indians, and this village extended for more than two and a half leagues. A league is a tricky measurement to be precise about. Different European countries had different measurements of their own version of, of what a league was. And there are nautical leagues and leagues over land. I'm not sure which league Carvajal was, was using here in this description. But this village is probably about 8 kilometers long, maybe even 14 kilometers long. I mean, he calls this place a village, but that's a really big settlement. 8 to 14 kilometers? This was not a small place. From this village there went out many roads and fine highways. He had not gone half a league when the roads became more like royal highways and wider. When 12 days of the month of May had gone by, we arrived in the provinces belonging to Machapiro, who is a very great overlord and one having many people under him, 
and is a neighbor of another overlord just as great named Omaga and their friends who together to make war on other overlords who are located inland. For they, the latter, come each day to drive them from their homes. This Machapiro has its headquarters quite near the river, up on a small hill, and holds sway over many settlements and very large ones, which together contribute, for fighting purposes, 50,000 men. Carvajal's description of life in the Amazon at that time is just, it's just chocked full of incredible details. Those big settlements, highways, large populations, sometimes fighting them. That's where the name Amazon comes from, this expedition because they were so surprised to see women fighting alongside the men that they called it the Amazon after the mythological tribe. For a long time though, these descriptions about these settlements have been taken with a bit of a pinch of salt. They've sort of been lumped together with, I don't know, stories of El Dorado, the mythical city of gold and things like that. They just didn't match our modern image of the Amazon relatively pristine environment, although obviously getting less and less pristine each year, dotted with small villages of people. But modern technology is revealing these cities, and there's one technology in particular which is responsible for all of this. All of these settlements are being discovered with LIDAR, which means light detection and ranging. Basically, a plane or helicopter or drone flies over an area shooting a laser at the ground, over 100,000 beams at the ground every second. A receiver then measures how quickly the light bounces back, and based on that, they can see the elevation of the land. This allows scientists to get a bird's eye view of what's going on, to see through the trees at the ground below. LiDAR technology has been used by archeologists since the 1970s. So I don't know what's going on, whether we just have so much more computing power available to us, or whether the development of drone technology is really making LiDAR more and more accessible. But the field is really coming into its own, for sure. It's a major tool now in archaeology. All right, let's look at these papers, because these are, these are cool. <laughs> these are cool. Let's look at paper number one. LiDAR reveals pre-Hispanic low-density urbanism in the Bolivian Amazon came out 2022. This was the first paper that really drew my attention to all these LIDAR surveys going on in the Amazon. Here, archaeologists were studying the Casarabe culture, who lived in the Llanos de Moxos of northeastern Bolivia, a huge flat region of plains and wetlands, roughly the size of England, that is, flooded annually by the Amazon. It's sort of the Amazon floodplains, I think. The Kassarabi culture was known to archeologists, but it's fair to say the scale of their settlements has only been revealed by LIDAR. Look at this, look at this map here. Every one of these triangles is a settlement which archeologists believe belongs to the Kassarabi culture as platform and mound architecture. There's loads of them all over this region. Two major sites discovered are called Kotoka and Landivar. Now, you're looking at it on the screen. It's an enormous site. I think it's 147 hectares, and the other site, Landivar, is 315 hectares. To put that in perspective, Roman London, medieval London, you know, the region that now forms that, that modern city of London, is 289 hectares. So whatever's going on in these settlements is basically on a similar scale to Roman London, medieval London, and they date from the same time period too. The Kassarabe culture seems to date to between 500 and 1400 CE. So contemporary with the end of the Roman period and medieval Europe, and a city on a similar scale. There are some really interesting features here though. First of all, both settlements are enclosed by a series of three walls, which are made up of a moat and ramparts, a lot of engineering of earth and water going on there. Not all enclosures are defensive, but they could be defensive, couldn't they? Especially one at Katoka, I believe, has a double rampart. Pretty defensive-y. Pretty defensive-y. The central platform here at Katoka is about 22 meters tall and probably involved the movement of how much earth? 570,000 meters cubed amount of earth. That's a huge amount of earth. 
And the other really cool thing, let's see if I can zoom in here even more. These U-shaped platforms are really common. You can see one here at Katoka. Let's see, there's more examples of them. Here's another U-shaped platform at a site, Santa Maria. There's another one, I believe. Yeah, this site, Salvatierra, also has sort of a U-shaped platform on the top. There's something going on there with that U-shaped platform. The orientation of these mounds all seems to be pointing sort of north, northwest. There's something going on there. I mean, Bolivia is in the southern hemisphere, so maybe it's just what they want to see the rising sun, see the full horizon. Um, but apparently, according to archaeologists, the burials of this Casarabe culture are also directed north, northwest. So there's something going on there with their worldview and pointing north. Katoka and Landavar are also surrounded by smaller settlements. There's at least 10 in the 10 kilometers surrounding each city, and they seem to be connected by roads. You can see these roads heading off into the Amazon here. This is a smaller site, El Cerrito, I believe. But yeah, incredible, absolutely incredible. Two large cities on a scale comparable to Roman London, surrounded by other villages, other towns, all connected by roads, Huge amount of earth moving, engineering going on, all orientated the same way, commonly with these U-shaped features. It's incredible. It's incredible. Paper two. This is the most recent paper. 2,000 years of garden urbanism in the upper Amazon. Don't know why that was so hard to say. Just came out this January, 12th of January, 2024. This is the paper that's generated all the headlines. This time we are in Ecuador much further north than the last study, and a different environment too. Not huge, flat wetlands. This time we're in the upper Upano Valley of the Amazon. We're in the foothills of the Andes here. So here again, archeologists are using LIDAR to study cultures that they already knew about, the Kilamope, Upano, and Huapula cultures. These groups existing between sort of 500 BCE and between two, 800 to 1200 CE. That's the time period we're talking about here. But even though these cultures were known about, the results of this study were still a huge surprise, I think. Over a survey area of 300 square kilometers, they found over 6,000 platforms. There was a lot of people living here. The standard platform seems to be about 40 by 40 meters. Archeologists interpret these as residential platforms, probably home to an extended family, something like that. But other platforms can be much bigger. I think the biggest one was 140 by 40 meters and five meters high. So a really big platform. There also seems to be five major settlements, five areas where the population gets quite a bit denser. This is the biggest and most densely populated area found so far, Sangay Archaeological Site. You can see here all these platforms surrounding roads leading to a main area with the largest and densest number of platforms. Look at the scale on this thing, 70 meters. These are not small platforms and look how many there are all leading to the center of this town, this city. It's incredible. But to me, what I love to see are these field boundaries. Look at this. You can see all the field boundaries here that surround these residential platforms, presumably. I love it. I love seeing these field boundaries. I don't know what it is. First of all, it reminds me a lot of medieval England, seeing the field boundaries preserved in the, in the earth like that. But yeah, there's something so domestic about it. I just can't help imagine the, the family at work there, laughing, chatting, singing, digging, getting to work, growing some food. I just love it. I just love it. Archaeologists know from the pottery of this culture and the residue, and uh, analyzing soil and things like that, that these people are growing maize and beans and sweet potato. This is an agricultural society for sure. This is what the platforms look like here. You can see the Upano River below, and these big platforms lining the river. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. The roads as well are also incredible. Look at these roads. These roads connecting these platforms are not little tracks. They've been dug into the earth. Typically, they're about five meters wide, but some are as wide as 15 meters. It reminds you of those royal highways that Carvajal was describing. These are not like 
little footpaths. These are major roads, real roads. What's super cool about them though, is that the longest road so far extends for about 25 kilometers. And if I pull up the map here, you can see the roads extend right to the edge of the survey area here. So there's more to discover. These roads are leading to places that we don't even know about yet. That's what's so fascinating. Yeesh. Incredible work, incredible work. Okay, last study. We're bending the rules a little bit here. We're not in the Amazon anymore. We're in Mexico, but it is about forgotten cities and it is about LIDAR and it's too interesting not to include. I've been keeping this paper in reserve for a long time. Didn't know when I was gonna talk about it, but I just knew 100% I was gonna talk about it at some point. Origins of Mesoamerican astronomy and calendar evidence from the Olmec and Maya regions. Let's dig into this, what, what does that mean? Many Mesoamerican civilizations, maybe even all of them, I'm not sure, but many of them certainly used a 260 day calendar. Now they didn't necessarily exclusively use a 260 day calendar. The Mayans, for example, very complicated calendar, long counts, short counts, all of this stuff, but they all had this 260 day calendar as one part of how they kept time. It's so common that archeologists had hypothesized that this calendar predates the Mayans, predates the Aztecs, and, and goes back much further back in time, probably to the Olmec civilization, the first culture in Mesoamerica that was building on a really grand scale they were making these enormous carved heads. Absolutely incredible culture, super interesting. This 260 day calendar potentially could be as old as 1400 BCE. It could be three and a half thousand years old. Question is, how do you prove that? Previously, the earliest evidence from this calendar came from a site in Guatemala called San Bartolo. This is it here. This is the evidence for this calendar. What we're looking at here is a symbol called the seven deer sign. This bar and dot symbolizes the number seven. There should be another dot somewhere around here. Who knows why it's not there? Error on the part of the scribe or rubbed off, who knows? And underneath it is the picture of a deer. In this 260 day calendar, the name of days would have a number and an animal associated with it and the calendar was divided into months. I don't know if months is the right word, but divided into chunks of 20 days. Each day had a number and an animal. This is seven deer day. That's what we're looking at here. And it probably dates to around 300 to 200 BCE and was the oldest definite evidence of this 260 day calendar. But that is about a thousand years later than it could have potentially been created. Like all calendars, modern and ancient, this 260 day calendar is based on the movement of celestial bodies, right? Stars, sun, moon. These are the things we base our calendars on. The Mayans, Olmecs, they were no different. So what if LIDAR can be used to study the orientation and design of buildings? And what if that can give us a clue to the origins of this calendar? You already know it can. You already know it can. Of course it can. Of course LIDAR could do something like that. Let's see, check this out, check this out. So over the past few years, Mexican archeologists have been doing a huge LIDAR survey of this region of Mexico. 84,516 kilometers squared LIDAR survey, huge area. They identified 33,395 archeological sites of different sizes. 33,000, that's absolutely insane. That's gonna keep Mexican archeologists busy for the next 500 years. Of these 33,000, 415 sites could be viewed in enough detail to discuss their alignment and maybe answer this question of how old is the Mesoamerican calendar, the 260 day calendar. Okay, look at this. This is the site Aguada Phoenix and it dates to 1100 to 750 BCE. 
So we're getting much further back in time here. As you can see from the photo of the site, it's hard to tell what's going on here with our naked eyes. It doesn't look like much, right? But LiDAR can see through all of this nonsense. Check this out. This is what the monument looks like from the perspective of LiDAR. We have this big mound here with a central enclosure, but the enclosure seems to be surrounded by different edges, different structures, platforms. I don't know how to describe it. Different edges that kind of add up to 20. Every month in this calendar, remember, has 20 days. This entire building is physical proof of this 260 day calendar. The entire building is a calendar. This wasn't the only example they found, of course. This is side MFU minor 22305. The sun rises in alignment with these two mounds on the 11th of February, 29th of October, 260 days apart. Where's the other one? This is site 14599 El Cacho. Again, central enclosure surrounded by 20 structures, perhaps. This is site 15456. Again, sunrise goes to the center of this monument, 11th of February, 29th of October. These buildings are calendars. These buildings are a part of this 260 day calendar and they go back much further in time. You know, 3000 years old, some of them. This site here, site A, San Lorenzo, very important Olmec site, major Olmec site. This one is on slightly different orientation, but again, it looks like the enclosure might be surrounded by 20 structures, 20 edges, 20 platforms. Great evidence of this 260 day calendar existing in some form as far back as the Olmec period. Even though we don't have writing of it, even though we don't have any artistic illustrations of it, like the seven day deer, like we saw on the Mayan site, we still have evidence of this calendar existing in the literal structure of the buildings themselves. It really highlights the huge potential of LIDAR, not just to say, well, oh, these sites exist or don't exist, but to answer really interesting questions about the culture of these societies, of these people, of these ancient urbanites in the jungle, in the Amazon rainforest, in the Mexican forest. Huge shout out to all the teams behind this incredible research. I absolutely love to see it. Just gets the cogs in my mind a whirring. And who knows what else we will find when we push these LiDAR surveys into more and more areas of the Amazon. Who knows how far these roads will extend or how many more sites we will discover. If I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. We're living in a golden age of archaeology. We really are. Ancient cities of the Amazon. Bada bing, bada boom. Beep. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Don't know how many times I said incredible in that video, but it's incredible stuff. Why did these cities disappear though? Well, some of these disappeared long before contact with Europeans. Probably events that we don't understand caused them to decline. Climate change, political change, who knows? As for the cities and everything described in Carver Hal's book, probably they were the victims of disease, I would imagine. That expedition that brought them into the heart of the Amazon also carried with it countless European diseases that these people had no immunity to. Um, sad. I don't know how else to finish it other than saying that's a, that's a sad chapter in history. But incredible archaeological research though. And who knows what more there is to find. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for watching. Boop. I'm in Vietnam. New video about Vietnam coming very, 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 very soon.